Uh, so yeah, today's topic will be about developing C-sharp apps for Linux on Windows. Uh, so it's like the general name. Um, so more like precisely, we will speak about uh, WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux, uh, and how it works. So uh, what benefit it has, and uh, so like how it can be used to set up your dev environment uh, and uh, try to uh, develop with that. Um, yeah, so I've created uh, like a basic plan uh, of my presentation. So first of all, uh, we will talk shortly about so why do we need uh, to develop .NET for Linux, because uh, like as, as far, uh, it was known that like .NET, uh, the Microsoft technology, like designed for uh, Windows only and so on. Uh, the next topic will be about uh, the WSL. Its main idea, so what it is, uh, what uh, uh, like creators had in mind. Uh, creating that uh, technology. After that, we'll uh, focus on uh, like some differences between WSL version one and version two, and to discuss them. Like mm, we'll speak about some basic architecture uh, of the two versions of WSL. And after that, I will start a demo part. So we will uh, like install and configure WSL two with Ubuntu. Uh, then we'll uh, integrate Docker with our existing distro. And after that, we will try some uh, uh, VS code uh, on VSL. So with a remote container feature, just with some, we'll, we'll start a project and try to debug it. And at the end, uh, I will show you that VSLG Called feature that allows us to open uh, the graphic applica Linux application on Windows. Uh, okay, so so let us start. Uh, so the first uh, subtopic is like our intro. So and I will would share some uh, my experience with you regarding how I um, like got acquainted with like development uh, with C Sharp for Linux, actually. Uh, so the first first Netcore version was uh, released. So it, it got uh, Linux support. And uh, like the first live case, I've met the like mm, .NET running on Linux. So you can see that image like on the left. So we had some Azure pipelines uh, that used actually a Linux built agent. So the app itself was stored uh, on prem on Windows, but for some, mm, I think for some pricing reasons, the customer choose to uh, build on Linux agent. That was the first time uh, we started to think uh, about some, you know, mm, like these file pass slashes for Linux built like for some uh, like line and endings because uh, like the build could fail for like that cross cross um, operational system reasons. So that was like a first, a first uh, acquaintance with that Linux build. Uh, so years ago after that project, uh, was on a different one that was hosted on-prem on IIS. And the task was to migrate it uh, to Kubernetes on Google Cloud platform. So that was um, like a not easy task for me because like I was not familiar with all that stuff like contain containerization or orchestration and so on. And uh, yeah, and additionally, our code base was very big. So we had a lot of, lots of code, lots of integrations and uh, we started to uh, migrate it with uh, like incremental steps. So first of all, we've deployed all the code to Linux, remote Linux VM. 
So we used it uh, via SSH. And first of all, we tried to run all that stuff on prem. We had like 17 services to fix all integrations, to fix uh, like all like Windows Linux issues, cutting that. Um, after that, we like moved, made a containerization uh, in Docker on prem. And after that, we moved to uh, like Kubernetes uh, on the GCP platform. So, and uh, like during uh, that work, so I've discovered that uh, like the more we make the services isolated in the containers, so the harder is actually to um, like track the state of an application. Of course, we have some different like logging utilities uh, for cloud services, uh, but um, there were many cases where it was like, uh, I wish to have some tool that like allowed me to uh, like to have a maximum close, maximum deep dive uh, to application on the development stage, because uh, so we've got errors like that could be discovered uh, like a lot earlier. Uh, like for example, only on that Kubernetes stage we discovered that uh, like we, we were using Hangfire and we discovered that. Like Linux time zones uh, are named differently than Windows time zones, so uh, that was uh, so we, we discovered that when the app was running actually on the cloud service, and it would be great to have some tool to discover it earlier. Yeah, and unfortunately, that time we like couldn't use Docker and couldn't use uh, like that uh, WSL first version because. We had uh, we were developing at the client VM and we were not allowed to like, change that configurations. Um, yeah, so after that I found like a WSL for my site for for myself and started like discovering it. Uh, yeah, so uh, let us talk about what uh, WSL actually is. And what's the main idea? So, like the main idea is uh, actually to make Windows and Linux uh, friends, so to say. Uh, the main idea is to have some like um, Linux environment to use uh, simultaneously with, simultaneously with your Windows. Make it uh, maximum fast, maximum uh, integrated, uh, and like configurable. Uh, and um, automated. So uh, actually the uh, Linux, oh, sorry, uh, WSL uh, runs on Windows as a part, uh, as a part of Windows now. Uh, so, and we do not need uh, just to set up like dual boots or like a traditional VM uh, approach. So, because WSL has its advantages and we'll talk about it later. Uh, so what actually uh, allows WSL for you uh, on your Windows machine? Uh, so you, you can see the list before your eyes. So like we, uh, uh, yeah, so actually we will be working with the terminal, uh, but just to show you, so we have, like we, we can download all that stuff from, uh, from Windows Store. For example, with the, the WSL itself. Mm, oh, maybe that stuff. Pattern. Yeah, so we have, we can download WSL and uh, like additional utilities as well as a repository themselves from Windows Store. So if you don't like terminals, so you can easily open Microsoft Store and do that uh, using the uh, UI. Yeah, and uh, additionally, like the like all the Linux functionality, so to use scr uh, scripting technologies, 
uh, like common line tools uh, to develop in like different different languages. Oh, sorry, you can see the list here. Uh, we have, an, for example, for Ubuntu, we have an aptitude available for us. So we have, we can uh, install like different, like if, if maybe you like some open source applications for Linux, so you, you can simply install them to your WSL. Uh, and with a new version of WSL, you can also mix like Linux and Unix commands. So they are like maximum uh, integrated one, uh, one with another. And uh, the last thing here is like to open uh, Linux uh, interface apps with Windows. Um, yeah, but what actually makes it like better than the traditional VM? So as I've mentioned, WSL2 is maximum integrated. Uh, it like boots very, very fast. Um, and uses, as you can see in the image, uh, less memory, and it's like maintained under the hood. So it's like a part of Windows. So you um, do not need to uh, set up a VM, for example, we are uh, Hyper-V manager. Uh, you, like you are not uh, choosing the configuration of that. So it just runs as the part of a system. And it like mm, not bothers the user. And now we will like dive a bit deeper um, in the architecture of WSL. So uh, as you can see in the image, the first version of WSL was like WSL one. Um, so it worked actually like a transition layer between the Windows system and our like Linux distribution. So it uh, like isn't um, like a fully functional Linux kernel. It's like a compatibility level that translates uh, like system commands that we are sending to uh, the hardware, uh, CPU, memory, and so on. So that was the, the main idea was to uh, like translate Linux command, and in this way, we uh, like we've got uh, like a Linux system fun uh, functioning on our on top of our Windows system. Yeah, so it was actually provided an interface to mount drive, uh, and uh, the same like aptitude usage um, that was yeah, and uh, yeah, so like when WSL appeared. So with the Docker update, we could use that WSL uh, to, uh, to be used on Docker as uh, like a main uh, Docker daemon placement, uh, like and the, the old container, containerization to happen. Uh, the newer version and the newest at the moment of WSL uh, works a bit differently. It actually uses a um, like lightweight Linux utility VM uh, that's written like on the Hyper-V core, but it's like very tiny. It's adjusted uh, just to work with uh, like Linux kernel that's uh, like maintained by Microsoft. It's a part uh, of, actually it's a part of a Windows now. So that uh, kernel is open source, it's maintained by Microsoft. So it will receive uh, updates, uh, like Microsoft updates with Windows and it's fully integrated in the Windows system. Uh, so here we can speak about like the full function in Linux kernel and not uh, the translate, uh, translation layer. And that gives us uh, like, uh, performance increase using the file systems uh, and like the, the operational systems uh, system in general. Um, yeah, um, so the next slide is like a short feature comparison between WSL1 and WSL2. So we see, we can see many of them 
like common for both. Uh, and like the most interesting are the last ones. So like, as I mentioned before, we have like managed VM, uh, for Linux kernel and uh, system call compatibility because we have no like transition layer. We have uh, just Linux kernel accessing our hardware. Uh, and here we can see one disadvantage of WSL2. Mm, we'll return to that slide. Mm, so when we are speaking about file systems, uh, so we have a good integration between uh, like Windows file system and uh, internal Linux file system, but they are functioning like uh, through a network because um, actually uh, Hyper-V virtual machine is running. So it's like interacting um, using mechanisms similar to network and that uh, really slow them down. Uh, so when we are like using VSL, for example, to uh, communicate Windows files, it's uh, like um, it's like slower uh, than we would use WSL one. So that's one of uh, disadvantages of that. So and uh, like during the development, if we are uh, like um, designing our uh, development environment. So it's better to keep like all the files on uh, inside of the VSL. So inside of it, like do, do not uh, spread them across file systems. Um, yeah, and um, the next step for, from that disadvantages, we all talk about uh, like exceptions when like WSL one is better. Uh, it's better than WSL2 in spite of WSL2 is actually recommended uh, for usage. Uh, so as I've mentioned, the project files must be stored. Uh, uh, yeah, so I made a mistake here. So they, they should be stored uh, like on a single file system. So if you want to switch uh, like to WSL development, you should uh, like store all your files and in the internal file system. Sorry, that's a mistake in a minute text. Um, yeah, the same that projects uh, like that requires, uh, so that, that requires cross compilation. So yeah, so for, for, for such kind of project, we would need to use uh, like WSL1. Uh, one common issue is with the like serial port and USB devices. So however, we can like mount USB devices uh, to in inside of our WSL. Mm, so sorry, and uh, USB, yeah, but what we would need to install some additional uh, tools like from both sides, from Windows side and uh, WSL2 side. Uh, and uh, the last uh, issue here is um, so probably most of you when using Docker desktop, so maybe you've noticed that it like uh, consumes lots of operative memory or lots of RAM. Uh, so that, issue looks the root of the issue looks uh, like to be the the WSL2 because uh, uh, it like currently it not uh, does not release cached pages in memory so uh, to, to, to the win to back to windows so you should uh, like re reboot WSL to do that and yeah so currently uh, they have an issue. Uh, here on GitHub, and it's still open, so we hope um, it will be resolved. Um, okay, so let's continue with the demo part. Uh, so for a demo part, I will be using like a Windows terminal and uh, Visual Studio Code, but let's start with terminal. So the Windows terminal, it's uh, like a new app appeared in Windows 11, so uh, it can be downloaded in, in store as well. Uh, so the, the most, like, I think that the most, like, uh, 
convenient thing is uh, that it's like multi-tabbed. It's very convenient. Uh, so, okay, so here I have my like we asked the list. So we have uh, like Ubuntu that I've installed before and some like Docker uh, images that were installed by um, Docker desktop. Uh, so let me just unregister that. Just to start from scratch. Yeah. Do you misspell the name? Yeah. So currently, uh, we will start to install uh, the Ubuntu to have a clean Repository, oh, sorry, uh, this distribution. Yeah, so it opens immediately and will start like it, it's working actually very fast. So next step, it will like offer me provide credentials to set up a user. Yeah, and currently we have like our virtu uh, our uh, distribution set up, so we can open it here as well. Um, like one um, a tip uh, in case like you will forget the password that you've provided in the registration, so we can. use like a user comment to should be default. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm using the wrong terminal. Mm, yeah, looks like I'm Use the wrong comment. Uh, so, yeah, so there is a possibility. Yeah, so I would need to look into the documentation to log in uh, with the root user and then um, type like a pass, uh, P A S S W D comment to change uh, the user. Oh, that's uh, to, to change the password for that user. Um, like the next thing we will do. We will uh, like access uh, our distro with the Visual Studio Code. So I have uh, like the distro and credentials cached in my Visual Studio Code because like it, I, I've used the same settings. Um, so what should we install to like remote uh, open that remotely? So um, there is a package. Uh, like remote VSL, uh, like extensions. Uh, so better use, uh, it's better to use uh, like that remote development. It's like a super package that contains like remote WSL, uh, SSH and some uh, other extensions that actually uh, allow us to work uh, on the distribution. Uh, so what's interesting here, um, we can like open any folder. Mm, like for example, the home folder here. And we have like a convenient uh, like file tree. So we have an integrated terminal here. So we can 
just open terminal window in any folder. So just to, not to play with the CD commands, uh, we can actually yeah open files here, for example, and edit them at the same moment. So it's a, like a very convenient uh, thing. So uh, like how it works, basically, uh, integrating with WSL2, the Windows uh, Win uh, Visual Studio code uh, is running the UI only. So it installs uh, some tool uh, called uh, Visual Studio Code Server that actually runs inside of uh, WSL uh, distro and it's performing all the job. So uh, de facto you're using Windows, but you're working with uh, Linux. Um, as well, let us um, start Docker desktop. Um, there is one setting. So yeah, I'm going to settings, uh, choosing resources, WSL integration, uh, and turn uh, integration with my distro on. So uh, in case you have like uh, more than one distro, they will be listed here. Uh, so that allows us to access like a Docker from here. Um, Oh, I think I should restart that. Um, like both. Yeah, so we are uh, like restarting WSL. It should now reconnect. Yeah, so we can see that it's it created some additional folders. For Docker integration. Hmm. Yeah, so we have, uh, so we can access like Docker from uh, our WSL distro for further work. Additionally, uh, we can install Docker to have some like graphic stuff. Mm. In the Visual Studio code. Uh, but uh, one more point uh, to, to pay attention to, that extension was installed uh, not on the host, but uh, inside uh, of a WSL2. So we can uh, like specify more extensions to use like inside of Linux that will simplify our work. Um, yeah, so like as an example, we can try to uh, so we'll create a folder not here. Like Docker. Um, 
So I've prepared some Docker Compose sample. Uh, it's very great feature. Uh, like we can just drag and drop. So I've missed that folder. Page it again. Uh, yeah, looks like something happened with my sudo access. Um, maybe we'll reconnect. Yeah, and like as well as from like host machine, we can make a Docker compose command. Yeah, as well, we can see. Yeah, looks like something happened after I've reinstalled the WSL. That extension. But here on the Docker desktop, we can see our like images, so we can like mm, simply use uh, that terminal interface from um, like from inside of uh, WSL2. So as uh, an alternative, we can just install Docker directly inside of WSL2. Um, so that's the diagram how it actually works. So we can like remove that like integration overhead between our host OS and WSL. Uh, and just use like Docker inside of uh, our WSL2. Like here. Um, so, uh, okay, the next step will be to try some code here. Uh, so I've took um, one of the Blazor samples available on GitHub and we'll try to play with it uh, inside of our WSL. Uh, so we have another, another great extension here is a remote container uh, extension. So this extension will uh, like open our project folder inside of a container uh, inside of uh, Docker uh, using WSL2. Um, so what would be the benefit of doing that uh, in, in doing that from WSL is that we'll reduce uh, that integration part that I've shown you in the diagram. Uh, okay, so we will... Uh, open folder container. Um, mm, yeah, and so we are given like some interesting options here. We can choose a container to use for that. So as you can see, uh, we have like a general C-sharp container, C-sharp with integrated database with PostgreSQL and 
uh, like different options. So I will use C sharp version. Mm, Looks like we have no five zero version. So like for six zero. Uh, and additionally, it offers to install the Node.js in case uh, we have some like uh, Angular apps in that project. Uh, additionally, you can like select multiple features here, but I, I don't need any, any of them. So let us start. Mm, yeah, so it will take some time because uh, it's like it's like containers building from scratch uh, from our project, but it's like pretty fast. So here we have our folder opened in inside of a dev container here. And additionally, uh, you can see this container here in our like Docker desktop app. Um, yeah, so that uh, we have like a Docker file generated and some dev container JSON parameters. And, and yeah, so preparing to the presentation, I had um, like errors with debug, but I think it was caused by uh, the .NET version. So we are starting our project. And um, so uh, with that step, we are actually a made like environment uh, inside of a Docker container. So it will allow us um, just to develop uh, for Linux. For Linux, uh, for example, with the uh, intent to containerize that application, or something. Uh, uh, yeah, so con containerize our application mainly. Uh, yeah, I had like similar issue with that. Unfortunately. Mm, yeah, it looks like um, yeah, so if we have yeah, so we have some time. So I can um I can get uh, like I've downloaded these samples from uh, GitHub, so we'll try to find version six. Six zero one. So it's like the reason is like version versioning. I'm sorry for that. So we'll remove that container. Yeah, so we'll run. Just will do same actions again. Mm. 
Okay, looks like it's like it's not allowing to do that again. So there is one more I uh, would like to show you um, like that uh, stuff we can see like internal uh, structure from our Windows Explorer. So I will find that folder here and we'll try to Okay, I'm sorry, we can't see your screen. Oh. Yeah, can you see it? Yes. Mm, yeah, so, uh, oh, sorry, wrong window. Uh, so what I've did, I've just like copy pasted it from here using the standard Windows Explorer. So we'll open that folder again. Uh, so we see our folder structure uh, in place. Trying to trying to run that stuff. Oh, yeah, it looks like it needs some additional configuration. Mm. Yeah, I'm afraid we, we like can't can proceed with that because like it looks some some like reconfiguration because I've uh, like didn't, didn't configure that six dot net six version for that. Sorry, but so the general idea is like that we are. Mm, like using all the benefits of Linux and containerization inside of WSL2. So we can like debug applications. We can set up uh, like container uh, that will represent our um, dev environment. Uh, so, and except of that, we can um, just nothing, uh, nothing stops us from uh, using WSL as on premise. So we can just set up all. Uh, infrastructure using like Linux commands and to make uh, mm, like a distro without uh, our distro, our environment, and not using the Docker uh, Docker functionality. Yeah. Uh, okay, and. Uh, The um, maybe last thing for today, I will uh, just show you uh, the graphical apps, uh, Linux apps open in Windows. So um, let us install some uh, UI app, for example. Let it be uh, GIMP.
yeah, would need some like more access to perform. It will take, yeah, it will take some time, but uh, that um, actually have an opportunity to show that how fast actually works the WSL2. Mm, so like comparing to WSL1, it uh, like zips and zips 10, 10 times faster. Yeah, and so, like it's um, yeah, it's because like that our like not translation that we have like uh, compliance system calls. Um, yeah, it's always takes takes some time after like we we are setting the fresh distro. Just sorry for that. And yeah, so that additionally proves that we can, uh, like, we, we cannot wait for like the, the next uh, official uh, distro release in Microsoft uh, Store, for example, or on like uh, WSL, because we can always uh, use Aptitude just to uh, update our applications and distro itself. Yeah, it's like additional amount of time. Um, yeah, while it's like downloading, uh, I could show you uh, like additionally if I was playing with uh, uh, with Docker without Docker with Docker and WSL two without using. Um, the Docker desktop. So I have like some little homegrown script. Uh, so actually, most of that is like copy pasted from uh, Docker installation manual. Uh, but we have like two uh, things to uh, so maybe one thing, but second it would be a good option too. Uh, the first one uh, after like the Linux installation, it's very convenient to add uh, like user, current user to the Docker group because uh, as you've seen, I've like was also entering sudo every time and that will allow you uh, like to use Docker command without sudo. Uh, and one more uh, important thing that uh, like Docker uh, it does doesn't start automatically with uh, WSL2 in case it's installed uh, directly inside distro, because uh, like we have no uh, system CTL in the distro, we have like some different thing, uh, and here we are using uh, like file called WSL config. Uh, it's like a, um, WSL hook that allows you like specify some uh, settings. Uh, for example, a boot commands. So it's like located in the ATC folder in Linux here. Or, oh, no, it's missing by default. So yeah, so we should uh, create that file. Yeah, so here in its location is like yet you see here and like we are creating that file and we are giving a command just to start Docker when WSL starts. Um, so, okay. Um, let us see where, where it was. 
Uh, yeah, so I think that we have uh, like the installation is finished, so we can trigger GIMP and what will open its UI in Windows. Yeah, so uh, like we have like a usual GIMP here, so we actually we can see that Linux file system, so it proves that it runs on Linux. And also here it's like integrated in the Windows UI, but uh, with a small difference that we have done here. Yeah, so like for example, uh, for development purposes, we can, uh, we could try to install Rider uh, inside of uh, WSL distro and use it um, like for, from Windows. So that's like a point plus for uh, WSL development. Um, yeah, looks like it's like all from my side for today. Sorry for like some technical problems trying to debug that like application. That's all from my side. Thanks for your attention. And uh, now, yeah, would would like to hear or read your questions. Markian, we have one question in our chat. Uh, does it use X11 forwarding? I mean, for Linux GUI. Silver forwarding, uh, not hundred percent sure, uh, but um, I've seen some diagram architecture, and yeah, I've seen something like uh, like that forwarding there, but not hundred percent sure. It was like um, yeah, but only one time. And yeah, didn't pay much much time to that diagram, sorry.